So today, in this session, we're going to discuss the safe use of an AED. You will have come across this in your towns and countries. They are sprouting up in towns, villages. They're not mandatory in your place of work unless you work in a doctor's or a dentist. So if you've got a defibrillator, you do have a better chance of survival. So what do we think AED stands for? Automated external defibrillator. As with any machine, you've got to take precautions. So the first thing we're going to look at, what causes a cardiac arrest? Different things can cause a cardiac arrest. We'll go through some things. External sources such as suffocation, drowning, blockage of the airway by tongue, vomit, hanging and burns. Breathing problems, crushing, collapse, lung, chest injury, poisoning, asthma, disease or illness can all cause cardiac arrest. Circulation problems, heart attacks, severe bleeding, heart failure, poisoning. Control centre, all it means is impulses are not sent to certain parts of the body caused by a stroke, head injury, drug overdose, poisoning, spinal injury or electric shock. So, to survive a cardiac arrest relies on what we call the chain of survival. The chain of survival is a chain with four links. The first link, you must have early access to a phone. You must know help is on the way before you start your CPR. Your second link is early CPR. The sooner you get the CPR started, the better the chance of survival. Your third link is early defibrillation. The quicker you get the pads onto the patient's bare chest, the better the chance of survival. We'll do that in more detail later on. And your last link, advanced care, because you've phoned in early access, paramedic crew come through the door, they will take over once you've given them a patient handover. So that's what we call the chain of survival. The next thing, we still have to do your primary survey, which if you remember when you did your CPR, is danger, response, airway, breathing. So, once you're doing your CPR, somebody's hopefully gone to ring 999, they will come back with a defibrillator if you have a one. So, what does a defibrillator actually do? Do you think it starts the heart? No, nope. it actually stops the heart from fibrillating. So if we look at the next piece of flip chart, your normal impulse shows you a diagram of the heart. The heart has four chambers. Two at the top, which are called atria. Nice to know, but not necessary. The bottom ones, the two at the bottom right and left, are called ventricles. That's the term to remember, ventricles, because that's where the problem is. So a normal heart, you will have a pacemaker in your heart that controls <coughs> how your heart works. When your heart is working okay, everything is hunky-dory, there's no problem. So what happens with a normal heart is... You have two chambers at the top, two at the bottom. What people don't realise is the top chambers work the opposite way to the bottom. So if you could see a heart, open heart surgery, surgeon does an incision, chest opens up, you see the heart, and you see the heart pumping like that. So that's how you think a normal heart works. But it doesn't. It's a bit more complicated. What happens is, if you could splice through the heart without causing any damage and you could look at the two chambers at the top and the two at the bottom if one of the top chambers is my left hand there's a valve in between the top chambers and the bottom ones the top ones is called atria the bottom ones are called ventricles so the atria work the opposite way to the ventricles so when the atria is open, blood will pour into the top chamber, the valve will be closed, the bottom one will already be full and it will be squeezing all the blood out. So when the bottom's empty, 
the top will be full, the valve will open, the top will start squeezing, and the bottom will open. So if you could see the inside of your heart, that's how a normal heart works. Through this pacemaker that everybody has in their heart. So when that's working okay, everything works, you're walking along fine. Then suddenly, it's as if the bottom ones, which are called ventricles, decide I'm not taking any instructions from this pacemaker, I'm going to beat when I want to. So instead of this happening, what happens is the top one will be full, valve opens, tries to squeeze, and instead of that happening, all that's happening is the bottom ones are fibrillating. So if you notice on this one, the normal impulse, it shows you how it works. If you go to the one where the ventricles are fibrillating, you'll see that the ventricles are firing off all over. So if they're not opening and shutting, allowing blood around the body, what will happen is you won't get blood around the body. You will be walking along. Suddenly you'll collapse and you will be dead. What you then need is what we call a defibrillator. Now hopefully somebody like we said at the beginning will have gone to ring 999, they will have gone to get a defibrillator. So until the defibrillator arrives, you will be doing CPR. Once the defibrillator comes, what people have got to realise is the quicker you get the defib onto the patient, the better the chance of survival. So. A defibrillator is safe, reliable, computerized, analyzes heart rhythms more accurately than doctors, and it will only shock someone who is dead. So are you going to do any harm using the defib on someone who is dead? Think about it. It will give them a better chance of survival. We're now going to discuss what happens with your pad placement and your chances of survival.